I watched two years of Bo Nix when he was at, when he was at Auburn, and I was like, get this guy off of my screen. I don't want to hear people talk about Bo Nix anymore. This is like he has had his two years at Auburn. Um, he had his third year, obviously didn't play well there either. And I was just like, I'm not talking about, it. I don't care what school he goes to. He ends up going to Oregon. I'm like, yeah, shoot, I, I don't give a crap. And, um, man, he was a lot of fun at Oregon. So looking at his measurable six foot two, 215 pounds, six foot two would be the 32nd percentile. I think he's probably going to measure in a little bit shy of six foot two. So he's going to be under the 30th percentile with quarterbacks. And then, uh, 215 pounds is 27th percentile as well. I think you mentioned him as being somebody that could probably gain a little bit of weight. Didn't, Bo Nix, what did you have him as? Uh, six two and two fifteen is what Oregon has him listed as. A pretty good record. That he's he's more two five now. So ooh, let's yeah. go. Yeah, he, he's and you like you two twenty five would be sixty third percentile. Yeah, he's he's th- he's very muscular. Very he's muscular. He's thick. Yeah, no, he's that. That's not a worry for me. I wrote down. I'm like, he's got mass, All and right, it's mu- it's beautiful, muscle beautiful, mass. Beautiful, beautiful muscle beautiful. mass. Okay, yep. I'm I'm literally I'm I'm updating the sheet now because I'm so glad to hear that he is 225. So if he's 225, then that's 63rd percentile. So uh, our yeah, boys got fine. some. Always got some meat on him. Pause. Um. All right. So the <laughs> background with with Bo Nix, four star quarterback, originally from Pinson, Alabama, was an incredible high school quarterback. Isn't he His, from Arca- Arkadelphia? Oh yeah, I think he was born Remember that in Ar- running joke we had. He was born in Arkadelphia. Yes. Arkadelphia, yes. Arkansas. Yeah, he was born in Arkadelphia, Arkansas, but A he real played place. he played high school football for Pinson Valley High School in uh, in Pinson, Alabama. So, um won Alabama's Mr. Football uh, his senior season. His father Patrick Nix was a former player himself. He was the quarterback for Auburn from 1992 to 1995. You figure that uh that's probably the reason why when Nick's committed to Auburn and started right away, I wonder if there's a little bit of a legacy play there. So I uh, started as a true freshman, played three seasons with the Tigers, but he was benched for TJ Finley in 2021. That ultimately led to him getting transferred over to Oregon. And that's basically where I was at, where I was like, I don't want to talk about this guy as a pro. Like this, the, the accuracy was not nearly what it needed to be. And worse than that, the decision-making was awful. When he was at Auburn, his decision-making sucked he had an incredible second half beating oregon ironically enough in that very first game of his season story freshman and people were like this guy's incredible he had one good second half of football and we talked about him for the next three years and he was never that good ever again a lot of that changed against when he when he went to oregon now to your point the offense was simpler the average depth of target for him was less than it was previously when he was at auburn but still even when he started to attack deep down the field, he started to take care of the ball a lot better. 1.7% turnover-worthy play percentage, which is by far the best of his career this past year. He didn't have a turnover-worthy play percentage below 2.8 in any of the previous three seasons. His play under pressure, another area where I was like, this guy is not NFL caliber, improved drastically in 2022. He had a 72.2 passing grade under pressure last season, and his previous high was 62.8. I believe the two years before that, they were in the 40s. So this guy really struggled with just plain old decision-making when it came to a clean pocket, decision-making when it came to play under pressure, accuracy, and turnover-worthy plays across the board. He was better in all of those areas this past year. I think he had a... Uh, let me pull this up. I think I have it right here. His uh, his total adjusted completion percentage was 82.6%. This dude completed more than 80% of his passes. Now, you mentioned how many of them came behind the line of scrimmage. So you go, okay, let's factor in a handful of percentages there because he's throwing a lot of stuff behind the line of scrimmage. But still, even if you took behind the line of scrimmage stuff away, which I think we can do in ultimate, which I don't have the time to do right now because I'm talking – I bet we're still in like a healthy mid seventies for him oh, yeah. completion percent. He's he's accurate. I mean, you could say it with your chest. It's... He is way more accurate than he previously had been. I think he is such a fundamentally sound quarterback, and maybe this is again why I was so gravitated towards his tape. His feet are so mirrored with everything that happens above him: the feet to the hips, the shoulders, the chest, the release of the football. All of that. It's just picture perfect almost every single time the fundamentals are beautiful for this dude you mentioned how smart he is pre-snap 
He is already comfortable adjusting plays. There were a handful of times in the games that I watched of him where he recognizes things pre-snap and he adjusts the play calls. Now, sometimes you get in a situation where you break the huddle and you got two plays and you're killing one of them. But either way, he's making really great calls knowing where the linebacker is going to flow to. Is this going to be a blitz? Do I think the defensive end is going to crash? Are the safeties going to rotate down and am I going to get two safeties high? He never seemed rattled because it felt like he had the answers to the test before he snapped the ball because he knew what the coverage was going to be. So that was great. Uh, Decent athleticism to be an RPO threat at the NFL. He's not going to be a burner, but he understands how to slide. He understands when to get down, um, and he understands when to tuck it and run. So I think that's going to be there. You mentioned that you didn't love his arm strength. I actually did. I actually liked his arm strength a decent amount. I think that's where you and I see the – see him differently the most is you kind of question okay his arm might be fine for the nfl it's adequate i think it's a little i think it's a little bit better than fine there are a handful of times where i i felt like he was firing it to the sideline for a back shoulder throw and he was able to hit it in the ucla game there is a play where he dials up a 55 yard bomb deep it just looks like a thing of beauty and it is just perfectly in line, in stride, right in the end zone, right into the bread basket. And that was a 55-yard bomb. So I went, okay, this guy's got the distance to do it. Now, did it have a little bit of a Russell Wilson moon ball arc to it? Yeah, okay, it did. But he still got it exactly where it needed to be. So I was pretty comfortable with him there. Something else that I wanted to note about his fundamentals and his kind of football IQ, if you will. A lot of these guys that you watch nowadays, they operate strictly from the shotgun. Like it's a lot of shotgun offenses because shotgun – you know, you don't have to worry about the timing of the guy behind you kind of getting even with you or getting into the play. Um, you don't have to turn your back on play action. You get to scan the field a little bit more. You get to be already a couple of steps back if pressure's coming at you, so you get a little bit of extra time to to react to it. Bo Nix is comfortable in the shotgun. Also very comfortable under center. Very used to playing under center. They'll go, they'll go center. They'll go gun with him. So he's very versatile in that regard. As well, there were a couple of times during his tape when I felt like he had a little bit of flair for the dramatics when it comes to the deep ball, but it really was not nearly as drastic as it was the year before. So it to me, that's still quite the improvement. The George game. Yeah, the George game was really bad, but that was the first game of the season. He drastically improved as the year went on. And a lot of those turnover worthy plays really went away. So I, I just. I was so impressed with what I saw from Bo Nix, such a fundamentally sound quarterback somebody who understands how to win the position between the ears before you win with your arm. Uh, Loved his versatility of where you could play him, a shotgun, under center, all that kinds of stuff. Ton of experience. You could see that. And I liked his arm. I thought his arm was better than a little bit better than adequate for the NFL level when it came to zip uh, velocity, if you will. And then on distance too. So super impressed with the man. Um, That's, that's ultimately why, because of how clean his 2022 season was, That's why I have him at number two here on this list.